hanging out here with As I Lay Dying. We're here with Phil and Josh from the band. You guys want to kind of personally introduce yourselves to the fans out there and kind of tell what you do in the band? Phil, play guitar. Uh, Josh, as you said, and uh, play bass in the band. Now, you guys are all with the other, you guys have three other band members, and now you guys are all Christians in the band, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, now with five Christians, I mean, how does that kind of inspire your music um, for the band? I would say as far as musically, it doesn't really, the, if you're talking specifically just like riff writing or musically, that wouldn't actually influence it at all. Okay. I mean, the, I mean, you can... It's all, it, it, you know, anything Christian based, I guess, would come from the lyrics, but most, most of the time it's just, um, you know, Tim, our singer, mm -hmm. you know, write about just personal experiences or, um, you know, not necessarily, you know, it's from... I guess the perspective of a Christian, but anyone can relate to it. So, so like any typical band, I mean, you're going to get your inspiration from, you know, what's personal life, you know, experiences, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because there, I mean, there has been um, kind of going back and forth whether you're not you're a Christian band or you're five Christians, you know, in a band or whatever. But you guys can just consider yourselves just, you know, a metalcore band kind of. But well, we just consider ourselves mus musicians, right. you know wanting to play music for a living so. right right we don't i don't think that any of us are uh you know if, if we were working at you know walmart on the side we'd be like i'm a christian cashier yeah exactly exactly so, i mean just you know that's something i think that it's like at least in the case of our band it's uh it's not like we we have a certain message we're trying to get across like in the in the live show or anything it's just uh I think everyone in the band likes that the, the message is kind of universal. Like you could you could take it however you want, which is right. cool. But I mean, I guess if you were religious, then the, some of those lyrics would make sense to you if you were kind of seeing it from the same perspective as, as Tim when he was writing it. Yeah, exactly. Now talk about uh, your fifth studio album that uh, was released back in May of 2010. It's called The Powerless Rise. Now, what's something you guys like about this? album like compared to your your others uh, i think well we all agree it's kind of a natural progression within our sound um, uh, i think we kind of found what we wanted to do with our previous album the notion between us and we just kind of kind of expanded upon that and um, you know i think both records are very cohesive together more so than any other release that we did prior so um you know always trying to do you know, newer ideas, but still staying within, like, kind of our range, our sound, but we're never afraid to, like, surprise people or yeah. uh, experiment with little things here and there, keep things interesting. Yeah. Now, you guys have pretty unique artwork that you guys have had on your albums. How does, like, the skulls and everything, I and mean, where does those ideas come from? Um, was it somebody in the band, or was it maybe you guys went to somebody outside of the band? Well, the artwork... Uh, for every album was done by Jacob Bannon, who uh, also sings for the band Converge. Okay. Um, and, you know, I think when he started on Frail Words Collapse, um, you know, it's just one of those things that for, for every album after that, just having that look that you can, you know, identify our band with the imagery yeah. that was created for the album. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think just we've always been satisfied with his little changes here and there from album to album, so um, just kind of every every release we've done so yeah. far. You guys have gone through some member changes and stuff like that. I, how has that really helped the band, you think, just to kind of create what you guys are today? Um, yeah, I, I think we, we've gotten to a point that every member is, um, you know, really devoted to this. In the past, there are always people coming in and out um, even before I joined the band, there's probably like 10, 15 guitar players oh, coming through. And, you know, I, I, I just, I guess not everyone had the same, you know, amount of like, I guess, faith in the band. And then, um, you know, once things kind of start picking up, um, I guess when Nick and I joined the band, uh, it, it, you know, everyone was fully devoted, and, except for our, our bass player at the time. And then, um, you know, we got Josh in the band, and I, I feel like we're all equal, equally involved yeah. um, and invested into this band. So it's it's kind of made it a, made us stronger together, right. I guess. And you feel that you guys have your 
best lineup you've ever had, for sure. Definitely, yeah. Yep. I mean, we were talking about earlier, you guys are uh, a metalcore band. Now, a lot of metalcore bands, I mean, you get those people that say, well, I can't understand your music. I mean, it's, all the songs sound the, sound the same. What do you guys say to those fans out there I guess, that, I guess, don't really appreciate that kind of music? Don't listen to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can't force someone to like your sound. So yeah, it, it's really cool, you know, people, fans that do like our music because we're ultimately creating something that we enjoy listening to. So the yeah. fact that someone can, you know, have that in common with us. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Kind of there's so many the different genres of music musician. out there. They can go listen to what they really do like. Yeah. But yeah, you guys so, are doing it for you because it's what you love to do. Yeah, and you know we try to. Like I said earlier, we try to keep progressing with our sound, and you know, some fans they might not really be into what we're doing, but we also have like a, a very strong fan base that have been following us since the beginning. So it's cool that they kind of, um, I guess, they move along with us as we, right. you know, mature as musicians. I guess exactly, exactly. Now, kind of talking along those same lines, do you guys have some bands that you just can't stand? <laughs> Uh, don't mean to get there are here, there but. are many, but uh, I don't think we need to get into specifics. Don't want uh, to start like a yeah. A can't war start here. Yeah. yeah, we had one band went outside of their genre of music that they would never tour with or something. That's what I was just kind of thinking. Of. I was trying to, to think if there's someone specifically that I really really don't like. I would say. Uh, What's the name of that? Bad I'm not going to do because there's still a chance that somebody who, who knows yeah. them will, will tell them about this. Yeah. Well, you know, regardless of, you know, whether or not we like them or not, or like their music, you know, there's a lot of bands that can make terrible music, but yeah. you can tell that they are passionate about what they're doing. Yeah. So sometimes it's, it's just, you know, you can admire, you know, that they just want to make music for a living, and yeah. even though it's so horrible, they're still, you know, trying to live their dreams. It's what they're doing, not how they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How about a most embarrassing moment you guys have had on tour? I mean, you probably... Well, I know mine. Many. My, mine was, uh, there's, a, there's a part that's an outro of one of our songs where kind of like the guitar players fade out, and on the record there was like a very, uh, like, kind of a fixy guitar part that played it out, so live we would just, like, they would be changing guitars and tuning while that uh, sample from the record played uh, with the guitar, and I would be singing along with it. Well, the uh, sample died, and uh, they didn't know that it died yet, and I was like looking around, I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. So, there's nothing there, it's just dead air, and I've seen the first line of it. It's the end of the song I never wanted for Light you uh, fans out there. Light on me, spotlight, <laughs> all the rest of the stage dark. And I realize there's no accompaniment, so I overcompensate by trying to hit the note on the bass because I know the part. But then I like slam the string so hard because I'm trying to get there, like you know, really quick, so it wouldn't seem like anything went wrong. But it sounded like I freaking just slapped the bass. <laughs> and I finished we all, it out. We're yeah. all aware. It's but they couldn't, they couldn't do anything because it's like a five second part. So I just had to freaking suck it up and go for it. For me, I was telling this. I I feel like yesterday I was telling this story. I, I, I fell off the stage once in Milwaukee, <laughs> um, just going crazy on this, this old song we had. Where, uh, um, anyway, I fell head first uh, off the stage, and um, I was all right, but I got back up on the stage, and my guitar cable like broke in or something. And, and I'm just like, you know, I'm putting my guitar down. Like I'm, I'm done. This is the last song. Like, I got my knees killing me right now. And then I was like, wait a minute. There's like a guitar part that it's just me coming up, so I was like, I have, I have to play. There's just gonna be this really awkward silence. And, yeah. Um, so I got my guitar plugged in. And I went and finished it out, and I was just up there, just pretty embarrassed, you know. But I guess a lot of, you know, a lot of guys fall off the stage. Steven Tyler fell off the stage once. Oh yeah. Um, or I think twice, just within the past year. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, it's. It had rock and roll, you know, yep, all exactly. off the stage. Yep. What do you think would probably be the craziest thing you've signed for a fan? A um, prosthetic leg. Really? We signed a, we signed a couple of them. Yeah, I signed actually. a fake. I didn't do that leg you're talking about. I got a fake arm though, like uh, on the, the last was it last Canadian tour or something that we got that I think. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's just yeah, doing a sign and you you know signing the C covers or whatever, and all of yeah. a sudden you just <laughs> a limb just, you know, 
front of you. And, you know, it's, it's always funny. Yeah. You know, it's the weird thing, the, the first day of this tour the other day in uh, Fort Collins, a dude came up and was like, I'm the guy who got all of your signatures tattooed on me. And he lifts up his arm. And he got all of our, like we signed his arm one night, he tattooed it around this other tattoo of our band that he had. And it just was so shocking to see my signature tattooed from yeah. on someone's skin. Anytime yeah. someone asks, like, sign my arm, sign this, whatever, just like, don't get a tattoo, please. But, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's cool that they do it. Like, I, I have not made a tattoo. Like, I love maiden. So right. I, I understand that you want to, you know, the band means a lot to you, but just getting a signature tattoo it says it's like on his arm. It's not like it's like a leg or something that's like easily covered. It's like right there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now it's the last thing for the fans. You guys want to just tell them uh, where they can go to find more about uh, As I Lay Dying, uh, and just maybe like social networks or wherever you guys are on your website. It's freaking. We got facebookcom slash As I Lay Dying, Twitter As I Lay at As I Lay Dying Band. Yes, right? As I Lay Dying Band. Yeah. And uh, just asladying.com, of course. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much you know, you can get tour dates, you can buy the tickets, you can buy merch from links there. It's like your one stop. So, we've got an app, an oh, app yeah. for uh, the iPhone, so yeah. it's pretty convenient to have. Yeah. Don't turn it on in class though, because even though you mute your phone, it still plays the music. It, the music it forces got you to, off. oh, it got taken off. All right, never mind. <laughs> it used to force you to listen to the first song that would come up, even if you muted your phone. So, oh, I was really? like, oh, man, I bet you a ton of people are going to get in trouble for this. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, once again, we're sitting here, Phil and Josh, as I lay dying. Especially check out their recent album, Powerless Rise, out in stores now. Check them out, guys. Hey, this is Maria Brink from In This Moment. It's Vinny Paul from Hey! Hey, this is LJ from Seven Dust. What's up, everybody? You're here with Sal from My Darkest Days. Brian from Ten Years. G'day, guys. This is Shim from Sick Puppies. This is Austin from Hinder. Jacoby from Papa Roach. And this is Backstage Entertainment. This is Backstage Entertainment. Backstage Entertainment. Backstage Entertainment. Backstage Entertainment. Backstage Entertainment. Backstage Entertainment. And this is Backstage Entertainment.